Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my guide on Talia. So Talia has been seeing quite a bit more play recently in the LCS and in solo queue. I figured why not make a guide on her because I've pretty much been spamming her these past few weeks in solo queue. I have a pretty good idea of how to play the champion, so I thought I'd share with you guys my knowledge that I have on Talia. So in the video, I'll be going over the combos that you can use on her, the early, mid, and late game, like how you want to play them, the good and the bad matchups that she does have. I'll also go over the builds, the runes, the masteries, and the ability maxing on her. And then I'll finish it off with the summoners that you want to take, as well as a few other little tips. I'll also leave some timestamps in the description below. So if you guys already know like what to build on her or what to max on her, then you can skip those parts by just going down in the description. So with that being said, guys, let's get started. So I'm also going to assume that you guys know generally like how to use all of Talia's abilities. I feel like going over all of her abilities and like explaining them to you guys would just be a little bit of a waste of time considering that there is a champion spotlight out on Talia and most of you guys probably already know what all of her abilities do. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about the combos Talia has. The first one is going to be the one you're pretty much going to want to use like most of the time in the laning phase and in team fights, and that's going to be her EWQ combo. Now this is pretty much like the maximum output damage combo that you can use on Talia. It works a lot better if the enemy champion is melee, like in the laning phase to hit this combo, because the reason you want to use E first is so you can get the slow off on your opponent so it's easier to land your W. You can can also use the combo of WEQ, but this is a lot more risky and it takes a lot more skill because you're gonna have to be like really confident in landing your W because if you don't, then you're not gonna get like any follow up damage off. So overall, try to use EWQ in the laning phase and in team fights to get the maximum amount of damage off. Once you do get to mid to late game team fights and you finish your Rylize on Talia, then you can kind of switch up the order of the combo a little bit. You can start with your Q and then follow up with your EW. By doing this, you're going to get the slow off on your opponent with your Q from the Rylize, and that should be really easy for you to follow up and land your WE combo. And the final one is going to be also for when you are in the laning phase, but when you're only at level 2. So when you do hit level 2 as Talia, I like to skill my E at level 2 and skill my Q at level 1. So what you can do to surprise the opponents with like a nice little all-in is you can use your E to slow them and then follow up with your Q. The reason you use E first is because it will get the slow off on the opponent and then you should be able to get at least like 2 or 3 Q shots off on them. If you are running Ignite, this combo, if they're like a around half HP will probably end up killing the opponent. You should see in the background gameplay here guys, like if you're going up against a melee champion, it's actually really easy to get first blood on them with this combo, so just be sure to take advantage of this in the laning phase when you are playing Talia. Now let's talk about how you want to play the early game on Talia. So Talia does have a lot of favorable matchups right now in both the top and the mid lane. If you are going up against a melee champion in the laning phase, then you do have some really good kill pressure. Like I talked about before, your combo of the EWQ can chunk the enemy down really low. So if they are going in for CS, then make sure you do try to use that combo because you're going to at least be able to like chunk them down to around half HP. And if they do come back in for more CS, then you can just use that combo over again and pick up the kill some of the time. So just definitely, if you are up against a melee champion, go more aggressive. Like don't just go like all in on the opponent because you can't go all in on someone like a Yasuo or a Riven because they're gonna beat you pretty much every single time. But if you do use your combos correctly and you do chunk them down, you'll eventually be able to kill them in the laning phase. Now as for the range matchups, you really can't do too much in those matchups unless you can end up hitting like your EWQ combo, but because they are range, it's going to be a lot harder for you to hit that in the laning phase. You pretty much just want to make sure you stay up in farm in the laning phase against range champions, and if your jungler does come to gank, then that could be your opportunity to look for a kill on the opponent. 
And as for the mid to late game on Talia, you basically just want to try to use your Rylai's to its fullest potential and just stay in the back line in team fights and kite the enemies if they do come towards you. You've got just absolutely insane kiting potential as Talia and you also have great zoning potential because of your E ability. So just make sure that you do use that to its fullest potential. Don't end up like going in the front line in team fights because you are very squishy. You're probably going to get blown up right away. So just try to stay in the back line kite the enemies if they do come towards you because as long as you do play Talia correctly it should be really hard for the enemies to dive onto your back line. So like I did touch on earlier, there really aren't any hard counters to Talia right now. I wouldn't say that there's a champion that you just want to completely avoid or not pick Talia into, but a few champions that are doing statistically well against her right now are Talon, Katarina, and Annie. Now the reason why Talon and Katarina do well against Talia are because they do have blinks and they don't have like a dash or a gap closer, so therefore it's harder for Talia to like counter them by using her E to zone them away. And once you do get to like a mid to late game team fight, the Talon's just gonna be, it's gonna be really easy for him to jump on the Talia and burst her down before she can really get her full combo off. And the reason why Annie is pretty good against her is just because she's got insane burst. She can pretty much one shot the Talia with her full combo. So I would try to avoid those matchups if you can, but really there aren't any like other matchups that you completely want to avoid on her. Next, let's talk about what you want to build on Talia. So you really only have one or two core items on this champion, and that does make her like pretty fun to play because you don't want to like build the exact same thing every game. It does definitely depend on the matchup. So the two items that are pretty core on her are Rylai's and Sork Boots. I pretty much go these two items like every single game, no matter the matchup or no matter the opponents I'm up against. The Rylai's item is just too good on her. It just synergizes so well with her Q ability, so definitely look to go that as your second item pretty much every single game, or not pretty much, get that item every single game on Talia. Now your first item does depend on the matchup, so if you are going up against an AP assassin, then start Abyssal on Talia. So someone like a LeBlanc or a Fizz, I would recommend going the Abyssal. If you are going up against an AD assassin, like a Zed or a Talon, then I would recommend getting the Zhonya's first. If you're confident in your lane matchup that you can win it, or if you are snowballing, then you can go for a Morello's first item. This will give you just a lot of damage and good mana as well, so you can definitely look to just keep poking down the opponents and keep killing them over and over again. Now you can also go Rod of Ages as your first item on Talia, but when doing the research for this video, pretty much no pro players or no high elo players are taking Rod of Ages on Talia. It is a decent item in my opinion because it does give you like more tank stats, it gives you more HP, and with the Rylai's then you're going to be pretty tanky and pretty hard to kill, but I feel like the Rylai's item does give you enough HP, and getting like either the Zhonya's or the Abyssal in the laning phase is definitely going to help you in in that 1v1 situation more than the Rod of Ages is. The Rod of Ages only gives you 60 AP as well right when you pick it up, so finishing like the Abyssal or the Zhonya's is definitely going to help you a lot more like in the laning phase and in your 1v1 matchup. So overall you can go Rod of Ages, but it's not an item that most players are picking, especially at the high elos. Now as for your third item on Talia, it really does depend on the game and on the situation. If the enemy team is really tanky, then I would go a Leandre's for your next item. If you're snowballing or you're really far ahead, or if you just want more damage, then I would go for the Rabadons next. And if the enemies are stacking a lot of MR, then I would definitely take the Void Staff as your third item. And lastly guys, I'll just leave on screen an example of a full build that I would take on Talia. So now I'm going to give you four different room pages that you can run on Talia. The first one is going to be the one that you want to take if you really don't have the IP to spend on runes, and it's just a standard AP page. And that page is going to be the Magic Penetration Marks, the Magic Resist Glyphs, the Armor Seals, and the Ability Power Quints. The next page is if you are up against like a heavy AP enemy comp or if you are going up against an AP assassin in the laning phase. This page is magic penetration marks, the magic resist glyphs, health per level seals, and ability power quints. The next page is one that Bjergsen is running in a lot of his Talia games right now, and that is the magic pen marks, 
only three magic resist glyphs though and then six cdr per level glyphs now the reason he's running this is because you're not really going to be incorporating a whole lot of cdr on talia so this is actually a pretty good rune page since it will give you some more cdr once you do get to that late game on her which will definitely help you out in those mid to late game team fights and then he's also taking the health per level seals and the ability power quints and the next page is going to be the one that you want to run if you're really confident in your lane matchup as Talia and you're really not scared against getting like 1v1'd or getting killed in the laning phase and that's going to be the magic pen marks, the ability power per level glyphs, the health per level seals, and then the ability power quints. The mastery page I will put up on the screen here for you guys. This is the page that Bjergsen is running on his Talia right now and pretty much every other Talia player is running so I don't know why you would want to use any other page than this one. As for the ability maxing on Talia, Q first, E second, and W third and obviously taking your ultimate whenever you can is the most common max right now on Talia. But if you are very confident in your Talia play, then E first, Q second, and W third is the highest win percent max right now on Talia. Now the reason why this can be a very good uh, max order is because your E will give you more damage if you do land your W E combo. Now this can be very good like in a 1v1 situation and in the laning phase because your E will do more damage if you can hit your W into it. Whereas if you aren't very confident in landing that combo, then maxing your Q out first is probably going to be what you want to do because it is like your easiest ability to land. So overall, if you're confident in your, in your Talia play, then I would max E first. But if you're not as confident, then I would just go for Q. And I would say that Q is like the most safest max that you can go on her. For the summoner spells on Talia, it does depend on the situation, but I would run Ignite most of the time on her. Now if you are going up against like a melee champion in the laning phase, then definitely look to take Ignite. If you aren't very confident in your lane matchup, then in that, in that situation I would take something like Exhaust or Barrier. If the enemy team does have like a heavy assassin comp, say they have like a Kha'Zix in the jungle and like a Talon in the mid lane, then in that situation Exhaust would be a pretty good idea. If they do have like a heavy poke comp, then then taking barrier would be a pretty good idea in that situation but most of the time I would take ignite on her because that just allows you to go more aggressive in the landing phase and look for those 1v1 kills. And lastly, to round out the video guys, I'm going to give you a few tips for Talia. So when you are playing her in the laning phase, make sure that you don't use your Q unless you're like confident that you're going to at least get three shots off on your opponent. The reason you don't want to do this is because once you do get a lot of work to ground and once you get a lot of spaces down where you've used your Q, it's going to be a lot harder for you to duel your opponent. So you only want to use your Q in the situation where you are confident that you're going to get a lot of damage off with it. If not, then I would just save it because if you do get a lot of work ground down, then it's just going to be really hard for you to duel your opponent in the laning phase. My next tip is to not forget to use Talia's ultimate in team fights. I find myself even like forgetting to do this a lot of the time, but a well-placed Talia ultimate in a team fight could completely split up the enemy team and it could end up winning your team that fight. So this does take a little bit of time to get used to and it takes time like you have to play Talia a lot to get used to like when you should be using your ultimate in a team fight and where you should place it. But once you do get used to her, a well-placed ultimate could definitely end up winning you the game. Make sure that you do roam on Talia as well. Her level 6 range on her ultimate is not the best, but it definitely isn't the worst either. It does give you some pretty decent roam potential, so when you do hit level 6, definitely look to go either top or bot lane if the enemy team is pushing out. Once you do get level 11 and rank 2 in your ultimate, then the range on it gets like doubled and that's when you can really start to look for some nice roams and some nice ganks, so just never be afraid to roam as Talia because she definitely does have a very strong roaming kit. You can actually knock opponents over walls by using Talia's W. Now this is not going to come in use like most games on Talia. You're probably only going to use this like maybe once in every 10 or 20 games on her. But if the enemy squishy target is like sitting near a wall and they don't have vision on you, then you can use this and it can be like a really cheeky play that you can use to get a kill on the opponent. And if it is mid to late game, then it could end up winning your team the game. So just keep this in mind when you're playing Talia, but you're really not going to find a whole lot of use for it in most of your games.
If you are taking Baron or Dragon with Talia in a mid to late game team fight, then make sure you use your ultimate to block off the enemy's path to Dragon or Baron. This can be just a really useful tactic to just easily securing a Dragon or a Baron because unless the enemy does have flash or unless they do have a dash or like a gap closer, then they won't be able to get over that wall and it should allow your team to secure the Baron or Dragon a lot easier. And lastly guys, if you are in a melee matchup in the laning phase, especially if you are up against someone like a Yasuo or a Riven or someone that does have a dash, look to play aggressive against them in the laning phase, look to hit that EW combo and then follow up with your Q because if you can hit that a few times on them in the laning phase, then you can definitely look for some really good solo kills and you can get a nice snowball going with Talia. So that is going to be all for this guide. If you guys did enjoy the video, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you guys have not already, and also let me know down in the comment section below of some other tips that you might have for Talia. I don't know like if I missed any big tips, but if you guys do think I did miss like a big tip on Talia, then leave them down in the comments below. That would definitely help out a lot. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.